William and you know, whilst you may have seen Abraham's video, you may have only heard or read from me. Uh, so you may actually now get to see what my face looks like and this isn't normally what my voice sounds like but I've had tonsillitis the last few days, still have. And that's why I haven't been able to do a video sooner because I haven't had a voice, or much voice, but <coughs> I have enough, or some, now. So let's see how we go. Uh, but yeah, I want to say a real big thank you uh, to everyone who's gotten involved, uh, both prayerfully and financially. It's been amazing to see how it's come together. Uh, the GoFundMe page tally is up over $5,200 uh, last time I checked. Uh, and I've been given over $400 directly, so that sees us around $5,600, which is fantastic. Uh, target of, of only $10,000, and in five days we're already over halfway. That's that's just amazing. Uh, both Abraham and I uh, have really been left speechless at times. Uh, one message I got from Abraham was recording. He just kept saying, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> just thank you. Uh, he's a very unassuming man. Uh, very just available for what God has and to be um, just blessed so generously by so many people around the world. Many of you haven't even met us personally. Uh, it's just been really touching uh, to see what the Lord is doing and to anticipate what He will get to. Uh, it's been much more than that and I'll cover some of that soon. So yeah, money's going really well in that sense. Um, I've also been really blessed. I had a, a client pay me uh, most of what she owed me a few days ago, which I've forgotten she owed me annually. And so he paid me over a thousand dollars towards a job I did for her, which goes to show how much I care about the money. And uh, and also my grandmother uh, gave me some money towards the debt that I built here, which I didn't expect what she gave me either. And that basically covers my flights, which I looked most of this morning, uh, which is, is fantastic. Uh, it saves me cleaning out basically my savings account, which is slowly recovering. But um, just God's hand in all of this has been really, really good. And Abraham and I, and we trust you also, have been praising the Lord for his goodness. And we'll continue to do so in the days and weeks ahead. But uh, yeah, flights, mostly booked. Um, a couple of return flights to sort out. But yeah, at this stage I'll be landing in Mount Hagen, Papua New Guinea, about 4pm. Not this Wednesday, but next. So that's the 17th of this month. And that's coming up rather rapidly. <laughs> <coughs> voice here somewhere uh, yeah and I was really encouraged to find that uh, as an Australian citizen I can get just a normal tourist visa which is free on arrival at Papua New Guinea last time I was in Papua New Guinea I was going as a volunteer with a specific organisation and that made applying for a special exemption visa really quite tricky uh, I won't go into that, but yeah, to get a tourist visa on arrival is just simplifies things so much, especially short notice. Really grateful. So I get there, what's what's going to happen? Um, that's a good question. There's a few things on my mind. Um, first thing I'm thinking about is water. I drink a lot when I'm working hard and sweating hard. And in a village that has no clean running water, with everything coming out of that dirty river you might have seen the photo of. Um, and my weak stomach, I'm not really looking forward to that. But Abraham has promised to buy me bottled water, so that's exciting. And I'll take the water filter for a long, just to be sure. Uh, food, if you've seen Abraham's video, again then, yeah, sweet potatoes may well be on the menu <laughs> fairly regularly. Um, altitude is another thing. Mount Hagen's only about 1,700 metres above sea level. Uh, but for a, a coastal boy like me, uh, where on average, our oxygen is about 20.9% of what we breathe. Uh, to go up to Mount Hagen, suddenly oxygen levels are down to about 17% of what we breathe, um, effectively. And that's a big drop. Uh, and I remember noticing that quite strongly when I was there last time, just the lethargy and uh, lack of stamina, just running out of energy, because you're just not getting the oxygen flow. Uh, not that I'm the most energetic or vibrant person at the minute, <coughs> as it is. But, um, yeah, we'll see how we go with that. I may just have to get Abraham and the local guys to, to chip in with the heavy lifting where I run out of steam. They're going to be laughing at this white guy that's got no energy. But, uh, yeah. And also, thin air. UV is a lot harsher. Um, I went for a walk last time I was there, and in half an hour I came back with this bright red V uh, from the neck of my shirt. It looked like it just been painted on me. It was ridiculous how quickly I burned. And 
I am white, as you can see, it's that winter here, I've got no colour in my skin. So it's going to be sunscreen all the way, and then mosquitoes as well. So I'm going to be coated in sunscreen, insect repellent, dust, sweat, and all sorts of other filthy grime. It's going to be really uncomfortable, but we'll survive. But because God is good, and clothes. I have to get washed eventually, but if I'm lucky, they might start standing up by themselves. They don't have to burn so much energy moving them. Um, mosquitoes, we haven't mentioned that. They work, we finally actually get to do something. Um, one of the first things that crosses my mind when I think of work is tools. Uh, just building this little deck here in the last few days, the number of tools that I've used has been incredible, really. Um, I'm blessed to have so many, um, but I can't take them with me. And the number of places I've gone around the world and people said, yeah, yeah, we got tools. I rocked up in the Philippines and they didn't have tools. I ended up spending over $1,000 on tools, which I then donated to the, the organisation I was volunteering with um, for the, whoever comes next, hopefully to have something usable there. Uh, same in Iraq and, and Indonesia too, for that matter. I ended up buying a lot of the tools that I needed and then leaving them behind. Um, a couple of times people have reimbursed me for them, which has been great, otherwise it's simply been a donation. But, uh, yeah, in a village without power as well, like, what have we got? Uh, Abraham did say that uh, he's been offered the use of a cement mixer and a generator, uh, which is fantastic. He, he just said this morning on his way to church, he was, he was walking off to some local church to preach, and a message saying that he's actually a carpenter, mate, who he said he's got some tools if we need to borrow some, so I'm really excited to meet this guy and be like, what do you got? How do you actually build here? <coughs> because not everywhere builds the same as Australia. Southern Australia and Northern Australia build differently. Um, you know, how do you build? What are your materials? How do you do things? Um, when I was in Iraq again, I couldn't buy construction timber. They don't have it. It's a desert. They don't grow timber. Um, everything was out of concrete. They only had two sizes of rough sawn timber. Um, so not really conducive to fine work and they were only primarily used for, for forming and the moulding around concrete and once concrete went hard they threw it away and so it looked at me strange when I was looking for timber because that's, that's what I know how to build with the Philippines I couldn't buy metal strapping for, for bracing um, because they just they don't have it everything's braced and strapped and built out of bamboo or concrete so what do you need metal strap before that just rusts in the monsoons um, so yeah things like that to rock up and go well I only know how to build like an Australian in a village where we build everything out of grass it's a bit weird um, so yeah to be able to glean some local knowledge and say well, how how do you build in this context in this environment what's the best thing to use and to do and all of that so looking forward to, to that the materials that's a big thing too um, Abraham has been donated several trees by some neighbours, which is great. <laughs> he was sending me photos, he's already had guys in the sack cutting these trees down. <clears throat> Doesn't sound very environmentally friendly, but we'll survive. Um, so yeah, he's already got a number of mill logs ready to go. He keeps asking me every other day, for actually twice a day, for a, a cutting list of the, the materials that we need. And I'm like, I haven't even designed your house yet, bro. I don't know what you need. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he's, he's ready to go. He's been offered this discounted rate from his local sawmillers uh, to cut all the timber that he needs for a set price, which is really exciting. Um, and he said this morning that we got more timber than we need. And I'm like, That's great because we're talking house size here. Like, I asked him, How big do you want your house? And he said, I oh, have four bedrooms. I'm like, Four bedrooms? Wow. Cool, because uh, if you look at his video, if you haven't seen his video, find the updates tab up here somewhere up above you. If you look at the GoFundMe page, and there should be update one, it's got Abraham's video. But uh, the, the original house size, the concrete foundation, is not much like bigger than the deck I'm sitting on. And so I'm thinking, four bedroom house, well, that's, that's a big step up. He's not thinking about himself. He wants that place to be a base for missionaries to come and do God's work. And he doesn't want to hold God back. <laughs> like, if God's going to give me a house, then let it be all out for God's glory. I love his attitude, it's great. It's also very daunting. Um, it was four bedrooms. To, to make a start of a four bedroom house in two weeks and I haven't seen the place, that's a big ask. Um, yeah, to go to another country and build a four bedroom house in two weeks. 
we'll see how we go. I want to get I want to get the foundation, the structure, and the roof on. He can do the walls up. We can plan it and align it afterwards. That's that's my goal. Um, I'm thinking just the concrete we're going to use for that. Um, you know, if you have a house that's this big, that's a lot of it surface area. But if you build two stories, then you have foundation and you have the roof area. And that's where the money is. The money is in the concrete and in the tin for the roofing iron. Um, but even looking at going two story, the sort of size I've got in mind about eight meters by eight meters, which is not real big, it's going to take 6.4 cubic meters of concrete. You think, okay. 6.4 cubic metres of concrete. Concrete weighs 2.4 tonnes to the cubic metre. That's over 15 tonnes of concrete. That's a lot of concrete to make by hand. <laughs> That's a huge amount of concrete to make by hand. <coughs> um, so even if you've got a cement mixer, we still have to cart all the sand and the, the gravel and the water. And then we've got to have it mixed and then we've got to pour it into the foundation. We've got to dig the foundation out first and put all the reinforcement in. That's a heck of a lot of work. And just the cement powder and the price he gave me. The cement powder for that job would cost nearly a thousand Australian dollars just for the cement powder. That's before you get anything else. And so when he says we got too much timber, I'm like, <laughs> if we got too much timber or more timber, let's not go a concrete floor, let's do a <coughs> timber floor. <coughs> and then we only need to get enough concrete for the posts hold the floor up, or the, yeah, how do you call the stumps is a technical term, um, so yeah, that could be a, a good option then, and then if we've got still more timber, we'll cut it on the floorboards, and then we don't have to buy um, plywood for the floor, we can just do everything out of timber, still got more timber, we'll cut weatherboards, and we'll clad the outside of it in weatherboards, still got more timber, I don't know what we'll do with it, <laughs> make shingles or something. <coughs> <coughs> So yeah, <coughs> sorry, lots happening, lots to think about, lots to pray about, um, obviously you can pray for my voice and that I'll actually be fit enough to travel, um, I do have a medical on Wednesday for my upcoming job which I'm meant to be starting as soon as I get back, nearly as soon as I get back, so really appreciate your prayers for my health there as well, I'm also meant to be preaching at another church this coming Sunday, I had to cancel a couple of appointments at my own church um, today physically not able to get along or not wise for me to get along and pass on my bacteria and everyone else. Um, so you pray that I'm fit and well enough to travel um, and do everything else that comes up uh, in the meantime and uh, yeah for wisdom for how to, to build for what to build to not get overwhelmed by the, the size of the project and the, the pressure of the time. Um, and yeah, as, as I said, my, my ambition is to get the foundation in, to get the frames or the skeleton, skeleton of the structure up, and then to get the roof iron on. If, if I can get into that stage in the time that I'm there, I will be just elated. Um, and yeah, pray too that if the Lord would send others um, to come and help me on the ground. I um, have one guy who's who's keen to come and he's trying to work it out with the, his job to see if he can take the time off at short notice and come and help me out and that'd be amazing um, particularly I mean, if even unskilled workers but if there's a carpenter or a construction worker you know who's interested and available who loves the Lord and is passionate about seeing his kingdom grow then I'd love to have another head to bounce ideas off but we'll see, God is good he's in control and I'm looking forward to it, albeit a little bit terrified. But yeah, thank you again and yeah, may the Lord bless and keep you in Jesus' name.